everything is on the table. It's Relationship Theory with Tina Laws. Welcome back to Relationship Theory, where we talk about all things relationships and nothing is spared on the table. So let's get back to Matthew and Gina. And we talked a little bit before we went on break about trust and passwords and so forth. And it's very apparent that either of us are giving in to giving our passwords to anyone. And so I thought it would be a great time to shift into what are your thoughts about your dating and giving information to your date about you? Do you feel as though when you go on the first date or second date or even third date um, that you should give any of your information to your date about you or do you think that's something you should withhold until a certain period of time? Um, well, I think I think there's certain levels of things that tend to be natural um, on a first date. I mean, interests, mm -hmm. uh, I guess sometimes career comes up. Uh, but I mean, I don't think you should get into anything too deep generally. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if there, yeah, if there's anything that, so I guess certain things could be worth mentioning. But th this is the issue. Mm -hmm. When you give out everything very, very early, mm -hmm. it's not trust that's built, but fear. Mm -hmm. You know, you can frighten people away by giving every single bit of who you are. And then that almost seems like a bit of desperation, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. I mean, if, you're, if, 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 if you are going to give your password, your phone number when you were 16 years old and you know every single bit of your life what woman in her right mind is going to sit up there and tell some man every man she's been involved with okay it ain't gonna happen on the first date it might not ever happen ever if she's smart all right um and then even when you start looking at men and you know like do you want to get married one of these days well you know, if you can, you don't know if you want to answer that mm -hmm. question to that person, mm -hmm. because if somebody says and you're young, so that p girls would ask you that question, right? But if somebody says, um, "Do you want to get married?" Mm -hmm. and you don't know whether or not you want to say yes or no at that point in time, because the minute you say yes, then they're going to start thinking, "Oh, well, it might be me," and you're thinking. Yeah. I don't even know you well enough to mm -hmm. know if, if I can answer that mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things like if you're looking, if you're, if you're out on a first date, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, interesting conversation about work, all that sort of stuff. Are you married or single? I mean, I think now that should be something you should ask. Because oh, absolutely. sometimes if, if I, I've been in a situation like that, it's mm -hmm. stupid not to ask in these days and times, are you gay? Mm -hmm. You need to ask that question mm -hmm. nowadays, right? Um, be, I'm not saying there's anything wrong no, with it. No, it's just you that, like know. you know, like, you don't want to be checking out some guy and he has not likes all the ace boys that you're hanging out yes, with, right? Absolutely. Um, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to let people know if you have more than two children. Mm-hmm. What is the difference with one or two? I don't know. It's just that more than two seems like a lot. <laughs> okay. And, you and know so what? somebody might want, you know, like people have to decide like, gee, okay, one child. Yeah, yeah. I can hang out with a girl with one child. Two children. They had the same daddy. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I could probably hang yes, out with her. Three yes. children. Like you start thinking money. How much money am I going to have to start buying for groceries? You yeah, know, like yeah. stuff like that. So, yes. so I think. And not only that, on the first date, even the first week, that's just a testing ground right there. Mm -hmm. You're trying to decide whether or not you see red flags, mm -hmm. whether or not you even like, you could, it's a big difference between checking somebody out yeah. and then finding out who that person really is. Yes. And the only way you can find that out is by dating and conversing mm -hmm. and finding out where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go to the grocery store with some guy, because you've been checking him out and he goes off on the cashier, mm -hmm. like, okay, right away, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going out yeah, with him yeah, again. Yeah. And so that doesn't take long. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you can have a conversation with somebody on the very first night yeah, and, and know that that person is not somebody you ever want to see again. Yes. And so on, on top of that, can you imagine for those who do it, because there are people that do it, can you imagine 
giving all of your no, inventory, giving all of your life story to this person before you realize that they're going to go outside and go off on somebody because they parked in the spot. Right. You've given all your information to them. So on, on top of that, I wanted to ask you, um, Matthew, before I forget, because, you know, with age comes forgetfulness sometimes, but... Have you ever have you ever experienced um, that in your dating life? Have you ever experienced dating someone where they felt they were insecure? Because I know you don't have those issues by what you've already said to me. So have you ever experienced dating someone that has been very insecure? As for what, whatever reason there might have been. As far as them sharing information. Or just insecure, period. And, and I, I'm asking you that because I want to know how you handled it. I mean, I... I have been. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, it's frustrating. I think. I mean, it was also quite uh, early on, sort of in my adult life. So it's also a whole kind of learning ground for mm-hmm. for myself as well. And mm-hmm. how do I deal with this? And um, for me, it took it took a little while. Ultimately, I, mm-hmm. um, I reassessed my my position in yeah. that uh, relationship, and and it wasn't for me. But mm-hmm. it took it was a it took a little bit of time. I wasn't sure, you know, at what point. How much is reasonable? How much is unreasonable? Uh, I think some of that just comes as well, experience and yeah, uh, yeah. And so, how long was you in this relationship with that person? Too long. Um, <laughs> uh, it went on for too long. It was um, more than a, more than a year, more than okay. two years. Yeah. And and with this person, did you share a lot of things? Did they know a lot about you, and you knew a lot about them? I think over time, I tended to share less just because mm-hmm. it was. It was. It was just getting overwhelming, and it, the, yeah, the more shared, it just it just makes you just not want to mm-hmm. really discuss anything. anything. You kind of withdraw almost. I mean, and and I asked you all that, and the reason I asked you that is because that might have something to do with your adamancy, adamancy about you're not giving any information to anyone about any password and anything because you've already had an experience where it wasn't too pleasing. Because I often find that um, many of us who are very adamant about things, anything in general, we are steadfast on our uh, precision because we've already had the experience in our past. And so by having the experience about somebody feeling that you have to have my password or anything they need, we've already experienced it. So we went down that road and it didn't work out right. So now who we are full speed ahead, well, who we are because of our past experiences. And I just wonder sometimes, had we not had those uncomfortable or horrible experiences, would our approach to this topic today be different? I wonder if you had that flourishing relationship and you were engaged and you done so well and you two were an amazing couple and you were still together, would that be your same approach? You might have said something totally different today. It might have been, yeah, we have each other's past. We've been together for 10 years. Well, great. I, I, I mean, I don't, I think, you know, I don't think so. I think, uh, I think that there should be a level Some of privacy. Level of like privacy. I didn't, okay. I still didn't end up giving, you know, passwords. Password, yeah. Just... And, and, and just out of curiosity, do you know anyone who has experienced that? Yes. And how, how does that go? I, I, I think I have, I know one person who um, has an open phone mm. and that open phone is a result of an insecurity partner, an insecure partner. Mm. So it had nothing to do with trust or anything like that. But like I said, sometimes just to quell the fighting, Mm -hmm. you just say, I have nothing to hide. Mm. Um, But that it, again, but that, that becomes one of those, in order for you to feel like you have some control, Mm -hmm. then I will let you have whatever control you feel you need. Mm. People, and and I I, I don't know if it works, I don't know if it doesn't work. People are people and people are going to do whatever it is they want to do. Absolutely, absolutely. So so if it's one of those kinds of things that in the, like if if I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do, Mm And I might not need to use my phone for it. You mm-hmm. understand? Mm-hmm. So if if somebody has anything to hide, no matter how much access you have to their life, they're going to find a way to hide it. So 
having access, so having not access having access, doesn't it, it, doesn't it doesn't matter. People are going to be who they are. So the only thing you can do is control who you are. Yeah. Yeah. And feel secure and, and, about who you are. And what's funny is um, having someone's password is a sense, and I, and I can say it, it it's, it's a insecurity for some, whatever your approach is, and then it's a security for others. Mm -hmm. And I say a security for others because hypothetically speaking, if you have a partner that works out fishing, mm -hmm. he goes fishing or, or a, a high risk job, mm -hmm. you may, you may want to have his password for various reasons. But you may have, have to make a quick You don't need his yeah, password. Yeah, but you might have, you might need it, mm -hmm. right? For various reasons. You might need it for his um, bank account. You might need it for the Wi-Fi that goes off mm -hmm. and, and you know, his password is in there because you want to watch Netflix. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's simple mm -hmm. things, you know, the car may fall apart. You might have the car, you might have to get his car. You have to get his phone because you might need to call the mechanic, which is in his phone. Just the various things. So it does have its, its ups and downs, right? But um, let's just let that sit for a minute and take a break and we'll be right back. Relationship Theory. We'll be right back after these messages. 